Well, welcome today. We're here at Ships Cove, and this is Tina, and I'm Dr. Weed, and we're here today to do a couple of recipes. One, a curried broccoli cauliflower soup, and the other, a chicken salad with fig balsamic dressing. Okay? Uh, sounds exotic, doesn't it? Yeah. But actually, it's a very good recipe and has all kinds of good things in it for us. Uh, so not only does it taste good, but it's good for you. Um, we're going to start making our chicken first because it's going to take a little while for that to cook. And then we'll work on the soup, and then by then the chicken will be done and we can go back and put our salad together. Okay? So the chicken recipe asks you to start with some uh, chicken that's cut flat. These are chicken breasts. Uh, that are sliced fairly thin, okay, so they'll cook more quickly. Uh, if you get a big breast, it's often very thick and it's, it's hard to saute uh, chicken that way. The other option is to grill it. You, if you have a, a grill either inside or outside, you can put the chicken on the grill and uh, cook it that way. But in order to make the salad, you need to have uh, chicken that's cooked. So I'll begin by uh, starting our chicken back here on the oven and that's going to be our back burner and I'm going to put it fairly high to start until the pan is warmed up and then I'll turn it down. Um, in order to grill the chicken we're going to use a little olive oil. This is uh, California olive oil but you can get olive oil almost anywhere. You might want to notice that the olive oil should be in a green bottle like this because if olive oil is exposed to sunlight, it goes bad. Okay, So you don't want it in a clear bottle. And it's actually better to keep it either in a closed cupboard where it's dark all the time, or in your refrigerator. Remember, the light in your refrigerator goes out when you close the door, so it's dark in there. But it's also cooler, and uh, it keeps the olive oil from degrading. So if you get a good extra virgin olive oil, uh, that simply means that it's cold pressed, and uh, the problem with lots of oils, we all have uh, used cooking oils of various kinds, but the difficulty with cooking oil is that it's been through a process. Cooking oil has been heated and then goes through all kinds of uh, chemical processes uh, uh, that deodorize it, that take the oil out of uh, the seeds, that, uh, so something like corn or uh, sunflower seeds or um, soybean, things of that sort. Um, and by the time you're done, you have an oil that's really been pretty much messed up. Okay, It may look okay in the bottle, but it's not that good for you. Uh, olive oil, on the other hand, has only been squeezed. The olives have only been squeezed and they're cold. It's cold press. Uh, so the oil hasn't been heated, hasn't been oxidized, and still retains all of the good nutrient value. So olive oil is one of the oils that you want to use to cook with. The difficulty with olive oil is, however, you, you don't uh, necessarily want to use it in high heat. And I'm about to uh, put my chicken in a high heat frying pan. So there's a better oil to use when you're doing high heat cooking. And that's coconut oil. Okay? Some of you may have heard about coconut oil, but not many people have tried it. Okay, and I didn't try it until a couple of years ago when I learned about it. Coconut oil is a wonderful kind of oil. You'll notice that at room temperature right now, it's solid. But if I were to warm this up to, say, 70 or 80 degrees, it would turn to liquid. Nothing wrong with that. It's just what the oil does. But normally you're going to find it's at room temperature. The good thing about this oil is that it will take very high heat without degrading. It doesn't smoke, and it's the kind of oil that you should be using for any kind of cooking. The other option is butter. Uh, ordinary butter is a good uh, fat to use in cooking. Uh, a fourth one is lard, and we've gotten away from using lard. Lard is uh, the fat that comes from uh, animals, uh, primarily beef, or uh, sometimes called tallow. Uh, but that's another good fat that doesn't degrade at high heats. And we stopped using it years ago because somebody told us it wasn't good for us. 
Well, now science has shown that it is good for us and we should be using it. So we're going to use coconut oil. The nice thing about this is if you're vegetarian, this is not from an animal. These are from coconuts. Okay, so it's all vegetarian. And I think our pan is getting warm. I can smell it back there. Uh, do we have a little spoon somewhere? I'm going to take out <coughs> some of this oil. Okay. And put it in the pan. It'll melt very quickly. And I want just enough oil to keep the chicken from sticking. It doesn't need a lot of oil. But we've got a fairly big pan, so I'm going to put more of that in there. Okay, and I'll just swish it around a little bit to get the bottom of the pan coated with the oil. And then I'm going to open the pack of chicken. And these are, as you can see, they're thin slices. And we'll put those in the pan. You know it's cooking when you get a nice sizzle like that, right? And Tina, I'm going to ask you to keep an eye on these things because I'm going to be busy making the soup. So if you could make sure that those don't get too hot, we'll turn the, the temperature down. You don't want to burn them, okay? But they'll cook in the next uh, oh, five to ten minutes. And there's a, a spatula that you can use. So while Tina's working on getting our chicken ready for our salad later on, I'm going to start putting together our broccoli cauliflower soup. Uh, we're going to be using frozen broccoli and frozen cauliflower. And the reason for that is, if you've been in the store lately, you know that cauliflower prices have been going to the roof. Uh, five, six dollars in some stores for one fresh cauliflower. But for a soup, you don't really need fresh cauliflower. We're going to grind this up anyway. And you'll find that frozen soups are often, uh, uh, frozen vegetables are often much less expensive, particularly if you wait for sales. Nice thing about buying frozen vegetables is you can buy them when they don't cost much and keep them for several months. So you don't have to time your, your cooking with when something might be on sale. You're going to have that available. A lot of times stores will have uh, dollar bags. They'll have a dollar bag of, of uh, cauliflower um, and, you know, 10 for 10. You know, you can come home with a lot of cauliflower, a lot of broccoli, uh, peas, carrots, and other vegetables. Keep them frozen in your, in your freezer. Take out as much as you need each time and keep the rest. It saves you having to cut it all up, saves some of the waste that you have with that, and anything you don't use, you can put it right back in the freezer. So, good way to go with these. Um, so, we're going to begin our recipe uh, with some onion. Uh, this is a yellow onion. I'm making just a half recipe from what, what's on the page there uh, because there aren't that many of us. But I'm going to, uh, ordinarily you want a large yellow onion. This is kind of a small to medium yellow onion. So it's not going to be a whole lot. And I'm going to cut this up for sauteing. And while I'm doing that, you might want to start our burner underneath our soup pot here, and that's going to be this one. How's the chicken doing? That's looking good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'll put some heat on that, and we're going to use some uh, a little olive oil in here to uh, saute the onion and some garlic. So I'm going to take my onion and get the skin off. Okay, not hard to do. Onion skin fortunately peels really well. Onion is one of those vegetables that you can use in a lot of recipes. Uh, onion is very good for you, it has great nutrients in it, uh, provides a lot of flavor to just about anything you're cooking, and it's inexpensive. Uh, you can buy a bag of onions for two or three dollars, depending on uh, when you have them. Again, you want to keep those in a dark place, because if you leave your onions out, guess what they're going to do? They're going to start growing. Okay, you'll see a sprout coming up. And though there's nothing wrong with that, you probably don't want to be eating onion sprouts. It'll make the onion kind of mushy, too, if you do that. So keep your onions in a cool, dark place, a closet, a cupboard, 
somewhere where um, you can get to them, but uh, they're not going to be exposed to light. That'll keep them from sprouting. Okay, so I'm just chopping the onions up, a couple quick cuts like that. Um, and then I want to also do the same thing with a clove of garlic. Normally the recipe will call for two cloves of garlic. We're doing a half recipe, so I'm only going to use one. Uh, garlic comes in a little bulb like this, and what you can do is just break off uh, one of the cloves, make sure that it's not all dried out and funky, <laughs> you want it so it's firm, and all you do with that is cut off each end, and then you'll find that it peels pretty much like the onion, you want to get that peel off. There we go, so then we have a, a nice full clove of garlic, and we're just going to chop that up as well. Slice it one way, and then cut it the other way. And these pieces can be fairly small, because garlic has a lot of flavor, even it's stronger than onion, so you don't need large amounts of it uh, to do the job. Um, so we're going to take just a little bit of our um, olive oil, back to the olive oil here, and because I'm not going to heat that to the same temperature the chicken is doing, how's the chicken going? Another, yeah. another, yeah. another four or five minutes of probably be okay, and then maybe we'll have some a platter or something on our plate, we can, you've got some plates here, one of the black plates, and we can put the chicken on that so it'll cool off and uh, uh, with the salad. Um, so I'd, I'd keep going a little longer than that, you want to make sure you and chicken should be thoroughly cooked. Uh, nobody should be eating raw chicken. <laughs> okay, There's no reason to do that. So I'm going to add uh, just a, a half a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. There's one, this one half. There we go. Well, it's not a lot. It's really just enough to saute the onion and garlic. So while well, that's in the pan, I don't always work with this big a cutting board. <laughs> um, we'll just take the cutting board to the pan, and I'm just going to scrape the onions and the chopped up garlic into the pan like that. And Maybe, Tina, while you're working on the chicken, you could just swirl this around a little bit with your spatula to get that sauteing. Uh, you want to saute, heat the onion until it turns clear. Um, it'll go from kind of white to a clear look, and then you'll know that that's uh, cooked enough. Um, and next we're going to get our broccoli ready. Uh, these, it calls for broccoli florets. Now, a floret is just a French word for flower, so uh, if I had fresh broccoli here, you'd see that the top of the broccoli is where the florets are. And in other words, not the stem. Now, there's nothing wrong with using stem, but most of the nutrient in the broccoli plants is in the flowers at the top of the plant. So you want to be sure that you're getting uh, the best part of the broccoli. So this is a floret, okay, and if I had fresh broccoli, we'd see a lot of stem down here. I'd cut that off and wouldn't use it to, um, for this recipe. And then I'm also going to be adding the uh, uh, cauliflower in my pan. How's, how are the onions doing? Are you getting there? Yep. Another minute or so. I'm be sure those are cooked. You're doing all the work here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm having the fun <laughs> putting things together. And what I have here is frozen riced cauliflower. Now you can get cauliflower that's in kind of big chunks. Uh, that'll work uh, just as well, but if you get it already riced, it means you don't have to chop it up as much. So it seemed like a good option to have riced cauliflower. And it literally, I don't know if I can show you some of this, and we'll put some on the knife here. It's just like rice. It just means cauliflower uh, that's been chopped into little tiny pieces. And that makes it easier to dissolve in the soup. 
because we're going to grind all of this up together anyway, so there's no reason to put uh, large chunks of, of cauliflower in. Cauliflower is another one of those really good vegetables. It's got vitamin C and other vitamins in it. Uh, it's something that many people find they can replace potatoes that we have problems with as we get older. Potatoes have a lot of carbohydrates in it, things that um, turn into sugar as they digest. And rather than having a lot of sugar going around our body, what we want to do is cut the kinds of foods that produce sugar. And one of them is to switch from potatoes to cauliflower. Uh, there have been so many people switching to cauliflower this past winter uh, that there was a shortage of cauliflower in the stores. Um, um, I think many people in America are discovering that, um, you know, when you're in your 40s and 50s, you probably shouldn't be eating that many potatoes, or bread, or cereal, or a lot of things like that. So we're going to use cauliflower, and that's one of the reasons I selected this recipe. Um, and we'll put a little curry powder in. But for right now, we have a measuring cup, and what we want is, uh, in this case, because it's half a recipe, half a pound of cauliflower, and uh, um, of broccoli, I'm sorry, this was a one pound bag, so I'm going to put the whole bag, I don't even have to measure it. So it looks like our onions are nice and clear, and they look good, so we're going to add the broccoli, okay, and same with the cauliflower, uh, we wanted one pound of that, and in this case it's a, a one pound bag, and I'm just going to use the half that's remaining in here. So I've got all the cauliflower and the broccoli and the onions along with the garlic and a little bit of olive oil. Basically the olive oil keeps it from sticking to the pan. The chicken's looking good. And you have you need a plate for that? Well this one actually just fell. Oh okay. so you can know. put it back in the pan. It'll <laughs> it'll kill anything that uh, uh, might be a problem there. Um, so we have both of those in there, and we're going to be adding some broth to that. Um, and um, we need to put in enough broth to make some steam. We're using a, a chicken broth, and chicken broth often comes in a box like this. Um, there are other, you can make your own chicken stock just by cooking, boiling a chicken, and you'll have chicken stock. But you can buy it in the store, it's a lot more convenient. Um, and they're different uh, versions. Um, this one happens to be fat-free. You don't have to do fat-free. There's nothing wrong with the fat. In fact, that's one of the reasons this recipe is good is that with the oil, coconut oil and uh, olive oil, there is fat in here and that's what we need. Uh, we need less carbohydrates and more fats in our diet. And I'd be happy to talk with anybody at length about all that. Uh, so for our uh, chicken stock, uh, we want two and a half cups of that, and this has already been opened, so I can measure that out to two and a half. And this basically becomes our soup, if you will. Okay, there we go, right to two and a half. Isn't that great? You'd, you'd almost think I'd planned this. <laughs> um, and they want you to start... Um, Cover the pot, reduce to heat, and uh, we want just a little bit of broth to start with, just to get it to steam. And we're going to cook that. You can give that a little stir there. Okay. And do we, yeah, we have a lid here. Just kind of, yep, that's good. Stir it around a little bit. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit in this. Now that we've got some liquid in there, let me put a little bit more broth in there. You don't want anything to burn, but what we want is to soften the vegetables. Uh, the, what the blender does, it has uh, blades that spin on a stalk so that when I put the soup uh, elements in there, we're going to chop it all up very fine and it's going to turn into kind of a puree at that point. That's looking really good right there and we're going to turn that off as we've got our vegetables nicely steaming there. The chicken looks great. You can turn the fire off on that. Let those cool off. And next we're going to take our soup base and 
put it in the blender. Um, hopefully these pans are not too hot. Do we have a hot pan? We do. How old is our in the <clears throat> whole drawer of them? Okay. That's the thing when you cook in a new kitchen. You know, it's all the things that you're not familiar with that can uh, trick you up. All right. Okay. Tina, yeah. if you could just uh, uh, turn the heat off the chicken all together. We're done. And if you could give me a little help here with your spatula, okay? I'm going to hold the pan up. Uh, you can get a look at how our soup looks right now with the, uh, still the broccoli's nice and cooked along with the cauliflower and just a little bit of vegetable juice. And we're just going to scoop that down in there. Try to get it all in. Good. Excellent. Very good. Okay, and I scrape out the rest of that. See all that? You're good. <laughs> always, always pays to have somebody helping you whenever you're doing a complicated recipe, right? There you go. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. And then we've emptied the pan. We're going to put the soup back in here a little later. But for right now, what we need to do is to grind it up. And to do that, we're going to use the... I can't move the... Uh, Face too much further over because of a plug, but hopefully, can you see that? Okay, yep. so we're just going to put this on here and give it a twist so it's on. Power says it's on, and let me just check my recipe because we're going to add the broth, but I think that comes later. Um, we need to add the curry powder and the remaining stock and simmer. Okay, so we need to put a little curry powder in there. Curry powder <coughs> often comes in a little jar like this. And curry is a blend of spices, uh, primarily from India, but other parts of the world. Uh, and it provides a lot of flavor to foods and also uh, actually helps uh, with your nutrition. Uh, it can add uh, uh, some components to your diet that you need uh, to be healthy. So curry is a good thing and it gives it a nice flavor. So we're going to add this uh, this curry and it calls the recipe <coughs> calls for I'm, I've got to get back to my uh, soup recipe one and a half teaspoons. So I'm going to use three quarters of a teaspoon of the and I always have trouble with <laughs> getting a measuring spoon. Hopefully I can get some kind of a spoon that'll fit. No, that's not going to fit. So what I can do is just... You can take off the lid, Dave. Yeah. Good suggestion, Pam. There we go. Now it'll fit. And i do one half. half of that. So three quarters of a tablespoon for half a recipe or one and a half for a full recipe. There you go. And that will provide a really good flavor and some nice color to the soup as well. Kind of an orangey color. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Um, we need to ladle the broth and the vegetables into a blender and puree till smooth. Um, so here's the rest of our broth. There's our blender. I'm going to pour that in. And we'll put the lid on. There, that's how it works. Okay. She's the expert on blenders here. Okay, and I'm just going to do some pulses so all over the place. Yes, it does. Uh, I, I think that's well, uh, well ground up. Okay. So what we want to end up with is uh, soup. Okay, not big pieces of uh, uh, cauliflower or broccoli in there, but everything ground together along with our uh, chicken stock. 
Um, and then I'm going to return that to the pot, like I said before. And it says release. I can take that up. I'm just going to take the whole lid off there. And then I'm going to pour this carefully into the pot. So there we have our soup. Let's set this aside. But we're not done yet, because there are a few other things that go in there. Um, we want to give the soup some body. So we're going to be using plain Greek yogurt. Okay. Um, now yogurt is an excellent food because it's a probiotic. It's something that helps our flora in our gut uh, manufacture and grow the right bacteria that helps with digestion. So yogurt is something to always uh, consider as something that you can use in, in cooking uh, and you can eat yogurt anytime. The problem we have mostly these days with yogurt is the kind you buy in the store. Have you seen it? It's loaded with sugar. Okay, because if you just taste plain yogurt, it's a little tart. Most people don't like the flavor of plain yogurt. So the manufacturers have come to our rescue and added gobs and gobs of sugar and syrup and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, you've all seen it in the store. Well, there's as much sugar in most of those little things of yogurt as there is in a candy bar. Okay, it's not good for you. So a better way to have yogurt is in a form that doesn't require sugar. And by using yogurt in cooking, you get all the benefits of yogurt without the sugar. Make sense? Okay. So in, in our recipe, we would ordinarily use two cups, but I'm only going to use one cup of yogurt because we're doing half a recipe. So I'm going to add that in to our soup. Okay. It's just kind of like pudding, okay. and that will blend in if we stir it. Um, would you like to go ahead and just kind of stir that around a little bit so that the yogurt starts to blend in with the soup, okay? Um, and then one other seasoning that we're going to use is a little ground nutmeg. Uh, nutmeg comes in a little nut <laughs> uh, and you grind it on a grinder. Uh, I didn't want to bring all of that today so I brought a little nutmeg in a plastic bag. It, as you can see it doesn't take much. A full recipe uh, calls for an eighth of a teaspoon so this is a sixteenth of a teaspoon. But nutmeg is one of those spices that adds a lot of flavor and you don't need a lot of it. So how, how's the yogurt working out there? Blending in okay? Good. And I'm just going to shake this nutmeg out of the bag and into the soup. There we go. And the final thing that we can add is a little um, salt and pepper. Um, I have a pepper grinder here. I always like the fresh pepper. Uh, I have another salt container there. Do you have salt here? Or? And as Pam has pointed out in the past, pepper is good for you. It's, it's a, a good component of uh, your cooking. So don't be afraid to use some pepper unless for some reason you're allergic. Thank you very much. And this is just plain table salt. Okay. And if you're on high blood pressure medication or have other restrictions on salt, you may want to hold up off on the salt. There's no salt in the recipe up to now. Anybody here need to limit their salt? Okay. I'm not going to put it in now and you can add if you want uh, to the soup before you eat it. How's that? Okay. And I think we're ready to go with our chicken salad. The soup looks great. I'd tip it up and show it to you on camera, uh, but let's wait until we ladle some out because I don't want it all over the table. That's not gonna work. Okay, our chicken's been, been sauteed nicely. You wanna, can you tip that up a little and show people? There you go, isn't that some nice, uh, chicken that's been sauteed in the pan or grilled, if you want to do that, do it that way. And it's cooled off now so we can work with it. So um, we're going to put together a um, chicken salad with fig balsamic dressing. And uh, what would help would be to have our plates here, because I'm going to 
plate the salad. That is, I'm going to put the salad together on plates. Do we have those black plates? Yes, they're right up in the cabinet. Okay. I think those will look even prettier. What do you? Somehow yes. that there's a nice contrast with the, with the green lettuce yep. on the black plate and then the golden chicken. Okay. And how many people are going to have salad today? You going to have salad? <laughs> no? Two? Three? Four? No, no thanks? Okay, I'll make four uh, chicken salad plates. And then after you see how much we like it, you can always change your mind. I would <laughs> we'll eat it, but I set. can't eat right now. Okay, that's all right. There we go. Okay, so we have our four chicken plates, and we're simply going to start with um, a, uh, a lettuce. Here we go. We have a salad mix. You can buy a big head of lettuce. Um, and hope if you're one or two people, you're going to use it up before it goes bad. Well, guess what? <laughs> we can never use our salad that fast. And, and lettuce will spoil after four or five days. Uh, so a good way to go is to get um, a, a mix of salad greens, okay? Um, they're already prepared. There's no waste. They cost a little more at the beginning, but I think in the long run you end up uh, not spending more money because you use all of this doesn't go bad quickly and it's already washed and clean and ready to go so again just like the frozen food it's a lot simpler uh, way to go so what we're going to do and tell you what Tina if you've got a minute while I'm working on the salad I'm going to ask you to take the chicken and you can put it right on our cutting board there that's it. And I'm going to ask you to slice the chicken. Okay. Um, I think a nice way to go with this chicken is just in thin slices like that. Uh, chicken always tastes better when it's thin. If, uh, if you have big chunks of chicken, it, it gets kind of chewy and I don't think has as much flavor. And this way, that's excellent. She's going to cut that up. In the meantime, while she's doing that, I'm going to put some salad on the plate. The other thing about the bagged salad, <coughs> when you go into the store, you'll notice some of the bags look more squished than others. Yep. The bags that look more squish, squished are actually, <coughs> excuse me, the fresher bags. Because when they package the lettuce, <coughs> um, how they package it, package it to stay fresh is they pull the air out of it and they use a vacuum. And as the bags of lettuce sit in the store, the air gets back into the bag. Mm -hmm. So the squish bags are actually, you wouldn't think so, but those are actually the bags you want to take. Right. Bye. Um, so um, that's a good tip to get the freshest lettuce, which will last longer when you get it home. Okay, so I've just put a little salad on the plate. You can choose as much or as little as you want. And then as Tina cuts up the chicken, we'll put the chicken on. And while she's working on that, I'm going to make a dressing. Uh, in this case, we're going to uh, use a big balsamic dressing. Um, you can get balsamic vinegar in all kinds of flavors, if you will. In this case, this has a little bit of uh, black mission fig in it, and uh, that produces a nice flavor. Um, it adds to the olive oil that we're going to uh, put in it, um, and just gives it a little zip. Um, it, it, you might say, well, there's some sugar in, in there, but not very much at all. Okay, it's really the flavor that we're going for. So with that, uh, I want to take a small amount, uh, an eighth of a cup, because we're doing a half recipe, and then a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And uh, now we're in good shape. Okay. And here's a quarter cup, which is the smallest one. So I, I only want to do uh, an eighth of a cup of the uh, um, balsamic vinegar. Um, so I'm just going to do half of this with balsamic. Um, actually, I'm doing the olive oil now. <laughs> so we want, we want a, uh, a quarter cup. So we'll fill that with olive oil. It's in there. And then half of that amount in 
the balsamic vinegar. This comes with a little cork in the bottle. So it's kind of half of this and twice as much of the other. So just pour that in and you'll notice because the balsamic vinegar is basically um, water and the oil is, olive oil is oil, water and oil don't mix, right? Um, but we'll take care of that in a minute, okay? Um, what we can do is stir that up. Um, I didn't bring a little whisk, but uh, we can just use a teaspoon. So, in order to mix it, you just give it a nice stir. If you use a whisk, and you notice, see how that blends together? So, it kind of looks like chocolate, but it doesn't taste like chocolate, okay? Uh, so that's how the, uh, the dressing will look, all right? Um, and we're going to uh, lay our chicken out. So we take a plate and put some strips of chicken on it. Well, it's still a little warm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like contrast, so if you have a little warm chicken and some cold lettuce, that's terrific. Okay. And we'll put some uh, some of our dressing on. Just pour a little bit. Doesn't take a lot. It's really just for flavor. Okay. And then finally, we're going to add two things that not only add to the flavor, I think really make the salad work, um, but also provide you with some good nutrition. In particular, some good fat. In this case, the fat's going to come from um, nice gorgonzola cheese. Okay, gorgonzola cheese comes as kind of crumbled up. It's a very potent cheese. You're not going to need a lot because it has very strong flavor, but it tastes great. And a little bit of that cheese just sprinkled on top of your salad. And I'm going to wait. If you, you don't like gorgonzola cheese, you don't have to put it on. Uh, but I think you should try a little bit of it, okay? And then finally, we have some crushed walnuts, okay? Again, nuts are a great source of fat in your diet and fiber, and they're very good for you. So we need to incorporate nuts more in our cooking, okay? And by getting chopped walnuts, uh, you save the price, because whole walnuts will cost you like $2 more a pound. But if you get chopped walnuts, these were less than four dollars, okay, for a whole pound, and you don't need a lot. So it's a good way to go to use nuts without having to use whole nuts. So I'm just going to put a few of those nuts on top of the salad. And what do you think, Tina? Does that look good? I think it looks great. Let me see if I can tip it up for the camera here. There you go. Okay, so. We're going to take a few minutes and everybody else can make their, their own salad and we're going to enjoy some chicken with fig balsamic dressing. Uh, the last thing is to sample some of our soup and I brought some cups. Um, did we get those out of the bag? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So along with our salad, uh, we're going to sample some of our uh, broccoli and cauliflower soup. So I've got a ladle and we'll dish some of that out. And remember this is without salt. So I'd recommend that you uh, salt to your own taste. Oh, oh you got the shit. salt there. Yep, thank you. Anybody else for soup? I'll, I'll try a little. Try a little? Just a second. Sure. You have a cup? Sure. Shouldn't be too hot. You want to have some soup? Okay. And Pam has the salt. <coughs> I know I'm going to add some salt. Salt always brings up flavor. Mm -hmm. I it too. What do you think? Everything is delicious. Oh, so good. You know, this soup would be good 